Welcome to another episode of Heroes and Bosses. Hi everyone and welcome back. This time I'm going to be painting UR025 from Blackstone Fortress with an Adeptus Mechanicus paint scheme. I'm starting off by giving UR a two-tone Zenithal Prime with black from below and then Corax white from a 45 degree angle above. Any spots that get missed are being painted with a brush on black primer. I'm priming the backpack separately and I've covered up the spot where it's going to go with poster putty. I'm painting this area entirely black with a brush on primer. Doing this is also going to let me avoid getting paint on the points of contact where the glue is going to go. Next I'm painting the inside of the backpack with two shades of silver. I'm using gunmetal all around the outside and then a bright silver on the recessed parts. This part is of course totally optional. Not many people are going to be peering into the cracks of UR's backpack. As you can see I haven't glued the arms on yet. During the Xenothal priming they were dry fitted so I could paint them separately. Once the silver's on, I gave the recessed areas a wash with Celia Green Shade. For the backpack itself, I'm just starting it off with a layer of black primer. Next, I'm going to paint the rest of the backpack so that I can get it attached. The first thing I'm going to do after the primer is cover the entire thing with gunmetal. Next I'm going to paint the two cables attached to the backpack. The ribbed cable is getting painted with a one-to-one -one mix of shining silver and glorious gold. The second cable is being painted with dark sea blue, which is pretty much identical to Stegodon scale green if you don't have this color. And finally I'm giving the entire backpack a coat of Nalm Oil Gloss. And since I still have some of this gun metal left over, I'm going to use it to paint the ammo belt and most of the gun on the left arm, except the framing around the six barrels. I'm also using the gun metal to paint UR's claws and the joints between the armor. The backpack is now dry and ready to be attached. I'm using plastic glue, but if you don't have this or if you got too much paint on the connection points, just use super glue. Next I'm going to paint the main body using two different shades of red. The first is Mephiston Red and the second is going to be Mephiston Red mixed with a small amount of dark green to desaturate it. I want this to be a little bit darker, so I'm mixing in a small amount of black as well. Now I'm going to use a Zenithal Prime as a guide for where these colors should go. Everywhere that has black paint, or looks like it should be in shadow, is getting covered in the dark red color. You can see here that most of what is being painted is underneath UR, but also the inner legs and the back half of the right leg. Next I'm switching to the bright red color, the pure Mephiston Red. Due to the sharp angles on UR's body, there's not a lot of places where you need to blend these colors together. There are a few spots on the legs however, and when I get to these spots, I'm painting right up to the edge of the dark red with the Mephiston Red. Then I'm wiping off my brush and getting some of the dark red paint on my brush, and then I'll use this to wet blend the edges of these two colors together. If the edge still looks a bit harsh, you can water down the Mephiston Red and brush from the dark red into the bright red along the edge to smooth it out. Next I'm going to paint the rest of the gun on the left arm using a 2 to 1 mix of Glorious Gold and Dryad Bark. I'm using this on the framing around the six barrels and also for the ammo canister on the backpack.
I want to get this arm attached, so I'm going to finish off the base colors. For the shoulder plate, I'm using Mephiston Red. For all the remaining joints and all of the exposed parts of UR's frame, I'm using Gunmetal from Army Painter. If you don't have this, you can just mix some black into any silver color until you get a nice, dark, gritty metallic. I'm also using this on UR's head and for the rest of the gun arm. Before I attach the arm, I'm first going to put a wash on all the metallic parts, since it's going to be a lot easier to reach everything right now. For this, I'm using a 1 to 1 mix of Nuln Oil and Agrax Earthshade on everything except the red shoulder plate. If you don't do this already, I recommend using a toothpick to apply your super glue. You also want to dry fit your pieces first to make sure they're going to sit properly because unlike plastic glue, this stuff can set almost instantly depending on what materials you're gluing together. Next I'm using Moot Green mixed with a tiny bit of white to paint the tiny square gaps in the ammo belt, as well as one of the small switches on the backpack. Now it's time for the other arm. I'm painting this one all through and grey on the bottom half, but unlike me, you should start off with a base coat of a heavy pure white, because all through and grey is a layer paint and it took about four coats to get it looking solid, and this isn't the first time I've been fooled by all through and grey. I'm then attaching the arm with more super glue, and then I'm going to paint the shoulder plate with German grey. I'm also using the 1 to 1 mix of Nuln Oil and Agrax on the ammo canister as I just noticed it has not been shaded yet. We're now getting down to the smaller details. I'm making a 1 to 1 mix of Glorious Gold and Shining Silver and I'm going to use this on the Imperial Eagle or Aquila on UR's chest as well as the nameplate on the left shoulder. I'm then going to use this same color to edge highlight all of the gold parts on the gun and the ammo canister. Next I'm going to shade the rest of the miniature before starting the highlights and final touches. I'm going to start off with Nuln Oil Gloss and I'm going to use this on the entire right arm and all of the areas of UR that were painted with the gunmetal. For the red armor, I'm using a custom wash. This was created with one part each of Nuln Oil and Agrax Earthshade, and two parts each of Carolberg Crimson and Lamian Medium. This is going over all the red armor, and it should help bring out the definition better while smoothing out the transitions of the two red colors that were used. You can also use this on the decorative gold bits on the armor, but I decided to go with Agrax Earthshade Gloss for these, though any dark color will do. Next I'm going to paint the eyes using these four colors. I'm starting off by painting the entire inside of the visor with Warpstone Glow. Then I'm using Pure Mood Green to trace the thin lines on the inside of the visor. 
followed up by a tiny dab on each side with moot green mixed with a little bit of yellow and white. I'm then going to use these same colors to paint the three little lights on the left side of the chest, starting with the darkest color and then working up to the lightest color. I'm next going to edge highlight all the red armor. I'm doing this with a one-to-one -one mix of Evil Sun Scarlet and Wild Rider Red. The majority of the highlighting has already been done with the initial two shades of red, but edge highlighting adds some really nice definition. So all along the sharp edges and any features that I want to pop, I'm just lightly tracing the side of my paintbrush along those edges. Then I'm doing the same thing with pure white on the bottom half of the grey arm. While I've got the white paint out, I'm also going to base coat the two small lights on the right hand side of the chest. Next I'm doing an edge highlight on the right shoulder with a light grey. This one is Dawnstone from Games Workshop. This shoulder's looking a little plain, so I'm attaching a water transfer. I have a video on how to do this if you're interested, but basically I coated the area with a gloss varnish, then slid the transfer in place and pressed it down with paper towel. Then just coat it with another layer of gloss varnish to seal it in, and then a layer of matte varnish on top of that so you can continue painting on top of it. This skull was part of a larger transfer, so it's got some extra bits of white around the edges. I'm just touching these up with some more German Grey. Next I'm going to tint the lights on UR's chest. The small one is getting a dab of Cassandora yellow, and the larger one is getting a coat of about three parts water and one part Temple Guard blue. I'm doing something similar for this large object on UR's chest. I'm first base coating it with pure white. While that dries, I'm painting these tubes in the front with bright bronze from Vallejo, and then I'm doing the same thing to the ones on the backpack. I've decided to give this thing a yellow glow using the Cassandora yellow, but first I'm going to trace the framing around it with Mephiston Red. The bronze tubes are just getting a wash with Agrax Earthshade. I want to give a little flare to the left shoulder since the other side got a water transfer. I'm using German Grey once again and a flat tipped brush to make a stripe right down the center. Then I'm going back to Mephiston Red and I'm making these edges nice and straight. After that I'm using the same red to put some nicks and scratches onto the German Grey. Next I'm using equal amounts of black and brown wash to create some more definition and shadow in all the grooves and recesses in the armor, as well as some weathering stains around the bolts. The skull is looking way too clean, so I'm splashing some black wash onto it and then using some German Grey to make a few scratches on it. Next I'm going to do the base, and I did cheat a bit here. I've magnetized UR and I did this for a couple of reasons. The first is that I want to give UR a kill team base and now I can switch UR back and forth. The second is that it's easier to show on camera what I'm doing. If you're curious about how to magnetize your bases, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video for that as well. If you only plan on using UR for Blackstone Fortress, then obviously you don't need to do this step at all. So after I magnetized UR, his back foot lifted from the base a bit, so I'm going to make it look like he's stepping down from a lip. This is just an old plastic card from my wallet, and I'm cutting a hex shape out of it to try to match the hex patterns you already see on the game board. I won't go through all the steps of painting this base, just how it was put together. That's because I'm following the exact same steps as I did in my video called Making a Crystal Cave Base, and I will put a link to that at the end of this video. So after everything was glued in place, I gave the base the Crystal Cave paint job, and now it looks like this. This dark brown color is Rhinox Hide. Just get a bit of paint on the end of an old brush, dab most of it off onto a piece of paper, just get a bit of paint on the end of an old brush, dab most of it off onto a piece of paper, and then lightly tap it onto random places where you want it to look worn down. I'm also going to add more grime to the joints and around the bolts, including areas where corrosion is running down the armor. 
This is just more of the one-to-one -one mix of Agrax Earthshade and Nulm Oil. And here's the final product, UR with a red Agmech paint scheme. Thank you very much to all my patrons for supporting me on Patreon and helping decide which miniatures will be painted. And a special thanks to Brian Jones for sponsoring the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell or be annihilated.